Yeah, so this is the, I'm going to talk about the bit of working group um, really quick because uh, I think we'll use a lot of the time to show you some demos later on. Um, yeah, I'm one of the co-chairs, Oliver from Consensus and Kyle, who is also on the call um, from Meta, is the, the other co-chair of the DIT Authentication Working Group. So our mission is to design, recommend, implement authentication and authorization protocols that rely on open standards and uh, cryptographic protocols using DITs and DIT documents. In the last couple of months, we focused on two work items primarily, and that's the first one is the um, DIT PSYOP specification. So it's not an approved spec yet, so it's still subject to change. What is um, PSYOP in general? PSYOP stands for Self-Issued Open ID Connect Provider. It is actually an Open ID Connect flow, also defined in the Open ID Connect core specification. It's um, not heavily used, but it Get, got more and more traction, especially we will have a joint meeting with DIF members and OpenID Foundation members, where we'll talk about um, reference implementations and also how to move forward with this work item. In contrast to traditional OpenID Connect authorization code flows, for example, the PSYOP flow is, does not require a centralized identity provider, OpenID Connect provider, or of 2 provider. So it's very similar, actually, with... What we do in the SSI community, it also has very similarities to SSI wallets, for example. The goal is that we would use DIDs uh, and a PSYOP implementation, which could be an SSI wallet, for example, um, together to achieve login and sign up to a uh, service provider, web page, relying party, you name it. And one of the goals was specifically to stay backward compatible, com compatible with existing um, OpenID Connect clients which again is where, where PSYOP is actually part of the core spec. But um, then we also specified Asian rules for plain OpenID Connect clients to enable them to use EAD-based authentication. You can find more information um, here in the GitHub repository. So that's the uh, specification currently working on, also some flow diagrams, um, et cetera. And yeah, this is... And for those people who are familiar with the WSRC Verifiable Credentials uh, specification and their actors, um, if you compared um, PSYOP um, with the WSRC Verifiable Credentials ecosystem, then the PSYOP um, would map onto the holder agent SSI wallet and the, the relying party um, onto the, the, the verifier component. And the verifier is in that case, um, for example, web application. To give you a better overview and understanding of how this can be used in practice, we will show two demos, one from Validated ID and the other one from Radical Ledger. Okay, just a, a quick demo. First of all, just I wanted to picture about the, like the demo architecture. The, uh, the demo showing is, is the CIOP flow, which uh, a user can either have a, like a web wallet or an ape wallet that is going to connect to its backend uh, or cloud agent, let's say. This user is going, going to go to the, a website, a Reliant Party website, and do a, a sign-in. And this sign-in is going to start the, the whole job flow. And this Reliant Party also has a, a website uh, and a backend server. And both servers has this CIOP library implementation, so then they can create the request response token and also do the verification process. So in in the first, so it's the same implementation, but in in two different let's say examples. One of is the so the user is, is using a, a static website, so because it's what's more easy in order to implement. So then when it goes to the that website, it just passes the the URL where is located the backend server or the cloud agent. So then all the operations goes into the backend. So in terms of the front end, you don't see anything it's just uh, going uh, on the back side. So if we go to the, this is, I mean, just uh, basic <laughs> website, it's right now we are on the web wallet and here's a, a button that goes to the Real, Real Party ACME site. And if you, I don't know if you can see, but here, is passing the URL on the backend server for the CIOP client. And then it just performs a sign-in. Oops, 
okay, this is the, okay, right now, the demo effect. So right now here, what happens is the, all the the flow has been performed on the, on the backend. And now let's say here it's already signed in and using the DT. So, okay, we have in, interchanged the DADs and, and this is the DAD from the, from the, the SEO client. This is like the, the first demo. And the second version of the, the same one is a user browses into the, uh, the computer into uh, the, the same static website, website from the relying party. And then this user has a web wallet, the static, uh, so the relying party is showing a QR code. And then the, the flow starts when the user scans it, that QR code. And then it, again, it's performing on the, on the backend, at least the, the second part. So, okay, let me, so here we are again on the real and party uh, site. And here right now, I don't, I don't have the, or the, or the real party doesn't know how to connect to me. So it's, it's showing me a, a QR, which I'm scanning. And right now it's performing the, the, that seal uh, flow and showing the key from the CEO client. And this is like the, the second part. So performing the request, the response and the verification. This implementation I also explained that we are going to adapt this implementation with some feedback we received and also incorporate the encryption part that the, is written on the specs, but hasn't been implemented. So when we got there, then we, we can publish that. Just also mentioning that besides this implementation that is in the div uh, repo, we are using that kind of a flavored version, but using the same specs on the ACID EPSI project, which is stands for the European Social Sovereign Identity Framework on the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure. And I mean, it's quite, quite a, a important relevant project in the, into the, uh, the European space, which will be published in a couple of weeks, uh, the, the source code. So will be also publicly available. And also here, in, uh, well, in Invalidated, we are also using that deep C of specs and on our SSI solution. Um, because what next up would be the presentation from Radical Ledger. Yeah, it's a kind of the similar implementation as uh, Albert was uh, presenting. Uh, yeah, first of all, I want to thank uh, Balash and Oliver and the DIFF uh, for allowing me to present this. Uh, I'm not really a member of the DIFF, but uh, they have been working with me uh, to get these things uh, going. Our objectives was we're looking from the user's point of view, like, you know, we want to make sure that users can kind of uh, get on board with uh, self-issued identities uh, to access services. So we want to make sure that uh, enable the end user so they could start using these services and, and provide the convenience for the end user and the, and the service providers and the, and the developers at the same time. So, so everyone could come together. So looking from this angle, the solution we wanted to build, uh, we want to address how easily end users could go to get on board and at the same time, how the developers could get on board. Uh, to enable uh, developers, we have developer browser extension. Uh, which basically work across all major browsers. And uh, next step would be to build a mobile application, but it's probably definitely the future work. Uh, we are planning on that. To enable developers and uh, relying parties, uh, the, uh, platforms, uh, we have developed a JavaScript module and published on uh, NPM. So this basically works on both Node and uh, on browser, uh, on, on both these uh, platforms. So this enables everything, uh, make everything easy for, for the user. I could show a quick demo. You can still see the screen. So this would be a typical relying party uh, application where you could log in with the with, the, with, the, with your DID uh, using uh, SIOP uh, service. Uh, here you could have like you know other logins as well uh, along with the DID login. Uh, so for this to work, uh, what you need is at the end user you you would need a, uh, the extension in, uh, installed. Um, so basically, this is password protected so the uh, keys are encrypted with the uh, with the password so you can see the did and at the same time we provide these guides to like you know create a did if someone wants and how the keys works and like you know how to how to configure the uh, extension uh, uh, to work with the rest of the things uh, setting is basically the core uh, you can see the did and the and the and necessary keys and the algorithms that been used uh, the password can be changed 
that's pretty much uh, what you have what you should need in the in the extension i mean we have provided a set, set of test keys uh, as well so if anyone just want to try it out uh, of course that, that that is possible once you have the extension set up uh, it's matter of like you know i mean you, you go for go and click on the login uh, so it asks for the consent from the user upon the approval it basically yeah, it navigates to the the secure area of the application, meaning you have you have basically authenticated and, and authorized to access the secure area of the application. So here, I mean, I mean, this process uh, comply with the OpenID Connect uh, protocol. Uh, it, it specifically implements implicit uh, flow. Uh, so basically, it generates a, a ID token, which is again wrapped as a, a JWT token. So whatever the content that redirected to the secure area can be is a JWT token, and you can simply see the content of that in any 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 jwt uh, browser or a, or a viewer yeah so that's how the user experience is if you go back to uh, the presentation i mean uh, it's, it's really simple to implement even at the uh, developer's end uh, so generate the request uh, all you need is i mean if you are integrating with the button uh, you need a specific custom uh, attribute uh, with the name did uh, data did siop um, I'll show you how the value get populated in a minute, uh, and then we need the uh, browser-compatible version of the npm library uh, from a CDN. Uh, it's available for anyone to grab here. Uh, so then you need to get the instance of the RP, which provide uh, RP, the relying party helper uh, uh, class. Instance of that and sets uh, uh, where it should be redirected and uh, uh, the, the DID of the RP. Uh, then you need to add the signing parameters. Uh, I mean, for demonstration purposes uh, and, 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 and testing, we have included the private key uh, hard-coded here. Uh, but the idea is all this information will be uh, generated in the backend and will be sent as a, uh, as a data duty, uh, some, some sort of a, a JSON uh, token to the client side. Uh, once these things are there, it's a matter of generating the request and encode it as a URL. And that would be the value for the custom attribute that we mentioned. So upon the click, uh, basically it, it is picked up by the browser extension, and basically it, it validates all the data, the DID of the RP, and the and and it again gets signed by the user's private key and pass into the client. So uh, to the restricted area, basically, if everything works out. So to resolve a relying party redirect. URL or the home, home home screen of the application again you need the same uh, library and you would go through the exact same steps as earlier getting the instance of the RP and adding the signing parameters and then you could validate the response so that gives you the guarantee that uh, uh, consent has been given and the keys provided are uh, valid uh, by the user uh, as per the DID document so yeah this is basically the integration aspect of it yeah this is what we have delivered so we believe this is kind of ready to go out we are relying on ethereum for the dids but it should work with other aspects as well so all this information can be found on didsiop org all the all the developments are open source basically you you, you could have access to uh, all the materials there awesome thank you very much <clears throat> awesome demo i think kyle also wants to talk about potential next work item that we want to tackle in the group. So essentially, with the did PSYOP stuff, uh, we've been working on um, trying to get this finished. We've got multiple implementations now for a bit. Um, and so that, uh, that leaves the did auth working group open to uh, new work item proposals. Essentially, what we're thinking about working on here is aligning the Jose KIDs with um, did IDs. So essentially, why is this needed? What it really comes down to is there's a gap where kids and Jose and the ID field in the public key property of a did document can cause interoperability and um, identifier concerns. Uh, and that exists because of the, the language gaps um, between the different specifications. So, I mean, more specifically where this goes is uh, essentially uh, you can have issues where keys uh, that are used to identify things um, don't necessarily uh, confer state. So I finally have um, key one here you know, it, it doesn't confer if I'm talking about the did document state of version one or version two, which ends up causing problems uh, for your cryptographic operations as well as uh, different identifiers. Additionally, there's there's no standard uh, convention. So for example, I believe ION has uh, so some specifics around how uh, 
key fragment should be identified, uh, whereas uh, Sovereign makes no mention of it. I'm pretty sure uh, many other did methods don't make mention of, of how to identify fragments either. Um, so that can causes uh, interoperability concerns. And then finally, um, in terms of the, the cryptographic uh, capabilities of it, when you're dealing in public keys, you don't necessarily have a way to be able to link it to an identity. And that's where ultimately it comes down to the authenticity of an identity um, to be identified. So where this is going is we'd like to uh, put forth a, a work item for this uh, working group. I will probably be leading the charge on this uh, and I'm looking for others to collaborate on it. We found with did PSYOP uh, in the past that Oliver who led the charge on that had to do a lot of the work on that. So uh, one of the things we're looking to do in this working group is to find two people to champion a work item. I'll be one of them, but I'm soliciting others to be able to get assistance and get this done. I'd be appreciated as far as possible solutions. It's not really decided yet. It's kind of more of uh, approach-based. We could go the route of just basically building on RFCs and then identify how to do it for non-JWKs. Rely on version query parameters from the did core specification. So that's kind of like uh, being able to do things like this, specifying version. And then finally, we can uh, choose our own adventure. Um, but let's try to stay within the uh, did core spec if we're going to go that route. So again, don't really have any biases in terms of direction. Either these are just the methods I've heard. If you've got other ones, that's great. As far as next steps, uh, let's come together, find a solution, and then uh, start working on that within the did auth working group uh, is what we're thinking. I believe you will need to sign up for IPR contributor feedback agreement in order to do so. Um, and then uh, we'll find a fitting home. So this is just an incubation process uh, to be done in did auth uh, working group. It could be moved to IETF, W3C. We don't really have considerations into that. So as a part of the process of, of uh, defining this, we'll, we'll decide where we want to take it next. And ultimately what this is about is filling gaps on Jose usage outside of the did core spec. So trying to align these things and lead to us being able to build upon it as an open standard. So with that, I'll stop sharing.